the Vox AV30, a modeling tube or valve amplifier for just under 300. This could be a real bargain. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen, and you can call me this guy for my name is Tricky to pronounce. Today I'm taking a look at the Vox AV30. Now, I said in the beginning that it's a modeling tube or valve amplifier, which is a bit weird. The box said analog valve amplifier, which kind of raised the question, what's, where does it have valves and what does it really do? So I had a look in the manual. I dropped my pick. And this is what it said. Merci d'avoir choisi l'amplificateur analogique à lampe. Je ne parle pas français. Thank you for purchasing. Thank you for purchasing. Main features. Our constant R&D of analog designs has enabled us to create a whole new category of analog modeling guitar amplifiers. This research allows us to create the sound of legendary tube guitar amplifiers. Hmm, sounding promising. The preamp is powered by a 12AX7 tube. This delivers a more dynamic and harmonically rich sound. For greater flexibility, you can change some tube parameters parameters to really customize your tone. AV30 and AV60 have two independent channels. Yes, and the channels are identical, but they are, have separate controls. So you can have two different sounds and you get an optional foot switch. You can buy an optional foot switch. So you can, if you're playing live, you can switch between two different sounds. So you can't really program anything into it. The power amp also includes a 12AX7 tube, allowing for real tube power amp distortion even at lower wattage settings. Like the preamp, you can also change two parameters in the power amp for greater flexibility. Yes, that's about it. It also has uh, effects, delay, reverb and modulation. Mm, so, and each channel has the same controls, but they're independent. So you can get clean one, clean two. I'll just run through the uh, those as well. So you get clean one, clean two, crunch one, crunch two, OD one, OD two, high gain one, high gain two, and, two, and they're based on, uh, for instance, crunch one is based on a Vox AC15, uh, and the crunch two is a Vox AC30 top boost, and then you have OD one, which is uh, this amplifier um, embodies 70s classic rock whilst being able to provide a dynamic, clean sound. So that would be something like a plexi and so on. So it has different types of things. Oh, who cares about those? We'll just play and see what it sounds like. Um, it also has an external speaker out, but I'll just check it with this. This time, I mean, it has a 10 inch speaker. So the separate switches for uh, the preamp are bright and fat. And then you have bias and reactor for the power amp. So I guess that's it. So I've all the controls halfway except for output and this is clean one. So I have a bit of delay going on as well. Just drop that. Whoops. Okay, a clean one with everything set halfway. I'll choose uh, the EQ, muck about with the EQ in one of the settings or in one of the 
preamp circuits because because if I start mucking about with that in every uh, circuit then we'll just be here endlessly. Okay, so clean two. So clear difference. Clean one. Clean two. This one actually has a bit of a breakup going on uh, with gain halfway. Let's see what it thinks of an overdrive pedal. I have the Strymon Riverside with just a moderate amount of gain going on. Let's add some reverb. Okay. Ditch the reverb and go to the next sound, which is crunch one, which was supposed to be some kind of plexi type thing. Oh, sorry, some kind of. Uh, was a Vox AC-15. Crunch 2, which would be a Vox AC30 top boost. Now, I never tried a, an AC30, I've tried the AC4 and the AC10, and I have plans on trying an AC15, and I do someday hope to try an AC30 as well. I've liked the AC4 and AC10. So I'm going to try and tweak this uh, a bit. Let's add gain. Let's see how much gain this does. some treble and middle see what that does
Okay, let's see what happens when we add more overdrive. Yeah, it doesn't like that. But this doesn't sound too bad. Uh, let's uh, give it a scoop type of sound. So, lots of treble and bass and not so lots of middle. Let's do the opposite. Let's put everything on full, in the EQ section that is, and see what that does. Let's see what the switches do, let's try the bright one. That was off, on. Definitely adds a bit of something. Fat switch on. It adds a bit, but uh, in a mix, I suspect that would just be unnecessary murk. Uh, the power amp section, let's see what the bias switch does. So now I have uh, bright and fat off. Oh, it seems I had bias on, if that weighs on. Off. Tiny difference. And uh, the reactor. That adds a bit of hum. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that, but... There's some kind of harshness going on with the reactor on. This sounds more pleasant to me. Yeah, uh, let's go on to the next one, which is OD1, which should be a plexi, which should be right up my proverbial alley. Trying to get it as close as I can to the actual plexi behind me and see what it thinks of an overdrive with that. Um, too much gain going on. Oh, that'll do. This is going really well. 
Let's try even more overdrive. <laughs> Yeah, let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> These have been kind of varying. I'll get to some kind of conclusions very shortly, I suspect. Uh, let's drop uh, everything back halfway in terms of uh, volume and gain and all that. So this is uh, OD2. <laughs> Whoops, turn off the overdrive. So this is supposed to be a 90s, sorry, 80s British amp. JCM 800, anyone? That's my guess. of hiss but then there's lots of overdrive going on um high gain one <laughs> That's a weird thing some modeling amps do. Just as if we're eating away all of the high frequency. And it's especially around here, the D and G string. If I could pick straight, that would help. High gain two. Let's see how much gain this thing does. Let's check out the modulation and reverb and try to get to some kind of ambient thing going. I think I sum this up. I'm not a fan. Some things were okay. Some things were just below okay. I mean, nothing was terrible. Uh, nothing was great. Uh, overall, it had a plasticky sound to it, which I didn't like. But I kind of got rid of uh, a bit of that feeling the more I played. Now, one thing I have to say, before I started doing this video, uh, I tried, played around with this a bit, so I'm going to do a video on this next. 
the PV6505 um, mini head, which is an all valve thing, and that sounds great. And after hearing that and then playing this, this really sounded plasticky, and that's probably part of the reason that I'm not really liking it. But hey, if you put up any old piece of whatever against something else, and one piece of whatever is really much worse than the other piece of whatever, then that says something, regardless of budgets and all. I mean, this is a bit more expensive, a lot more expensive, or a bit more expensive than this. Um, but this is really cheap, and you can get cheap stuff uh, that's way better than this, like the Harley Benton Tube 15, or even you can get, I mean, buy a second-hand Vox AC10. It's a brilliant piece of gear, whereas this definitely, for me, is not. 277, uh, 277 euros for uh, something like this seems like a good price, but... <laughs> It's totally, I mean, to sum it up in a sentence, this is totally uninspiring. That's the bottom line. So, I didn't get the feeling that I want to try it with a different set of speakers. I mean, I don't think the speaker here was brilliant, but I don't think it was the downfall of the amp in any way. I think it's just a bit of an average amp, for the, even for the price. I'd prefer a Roland Cube any day. I'd take the Spark Amp, I'd even take a Katana, I guess, uh, even though I'm no big fan of that either. So, yeah, totally uninspiring. If you want to watch more of my amp reviews, there's a playlist here somewhere. Uh, join me on Patreon because you get all of my music for free and you can uh, you get a bunch of exclusives and all that. And uh, click like if you like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in another one. So, take care. Bye.